Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is no stranger to this show. He just turned pro at the NPC USA Championships, winning the super heavyweight class. My pleasure to welcome back Henry Jackson III. Hey, how you doing, Dave? Hey, last time we talked to you, I just won the Junior USA overall in 2016. No one knew who you were. You were a new face on the block, and we said, I, well, I said to you, I said, you'll be a pro one day, and uh, you finally are. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, man. It's been a long journey. Uh, I remember stepping into the NPC scene back in 2015, you know, giving myself three years to get my pro card, and hey, in three years it happened. So, hey, what can you say, man? That, I'm blessed that, that's a success story. Most people, it doesn't happen for that quickly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but I, I'm lucky, a lucky guy. Lucky yeah. guy. Well, you got, you got some terrific talent as well. Now, you, you went through a very stressful prep because you, were, you moved recently to California. You were looking for a job. Then you, got, then you were working three jobs. Tell us, tell us what your schedule was like leading up to the show. Oh, man. Yeah, so moved out here in October. I immediately landed a job at a GNC store. Uh, maybe a month after that, I landed a job with 24-hour fitness, personal training, and on top of that, I started driving Uber. So um, <laughs> my day was usually started like 5.30 in the morning with my 5.30 client, um, with my 5.30 client, and then I would go, I would check out at 24-hour fitness around 9 o'clock, work at GNC from like 10 to 4, Oof. drive lift from like 4 to nine and then i would train from nine to midnight at wow Gold. yeah <laughs> what a freaking two, schedule that is the boy. yeah yeah it was insane i would do that i would do that maybe three to four times a week and on the other days i'll try to catch up on rest but right. man it was insane so that was typically my my daily schedule now, yeah. i love guys with a, with a strong work ethic i think that's great and i think you're going to be a tr true success down the road because you know what lot you're not afraid to work hard, but what was the reason for working three for three jobs? It just needed the money. Yeah, yeah, just needed the money. So <laughs> bodybuilding is expensive, right? Yes, very expensive. Anybody who's competed in bodybuilding knows how expensive it can be. So that's what I had to do. And on top of that, I maybe had maybe um, three clients I trained online, and that was another. Uh, source of income I had. Yeah, so. that's great. I always say diversify, have multiple streams of income, and, you, and that's the greatest way to earn a living because if one dries up, you got the other one to fall back on. And obviously, you're not afraid to work hard, and that, that's cool. Another thing you actually endured during this prep is it's been very hot out there in California. What, was yes. the, what were the record temps so far that they hit? The highest was 117. Wow. Now, yeah. that wouldn't sound so bad until you hear the fact that Henry has no air conditioning in his house. Yes, <laughs> yes. Air, so, air, air conditioning broke. So, uh, yeah, I've been dealing with that throughout the whole heat wave. And, man, what can I say? Is we found, I found ways to make it work. You know, at night you wet your T-shirt, you get up under a fan, and it cools you off pretty good, man. But during the day, I make sure I'm out the house around the AC because during the day it's just too hot. At night in California, it cools down in the valley pretty good. So it's, it cools down it's, to 97, yeah, 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 97 or you know high 80s, but it's it's pretty bearable. But man, during the day, it's no way, it's no way. No wonder how you got so lean. You you you, you never stop sweating for every, 24 hours a day. But it actually stressed my body out, man, and I just yeah. my body was responding the way it usually has and. Uh. We kicked my cardio up from like one hour, and it was two hours, and it was three hours for a few days. Whoa. I was, who you know is willing to do three hours of cardio, right? So, but that's what we had to do for like maybe the last three or four days of the prep, and it was brutal, man. So, but we pretty much had to shop, shop the fat off my body, force it off. So, I, I bet you like doing the three hours of cardio because at least you got to sit in the gym in the air conditioning, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Henry, Henry's like, should I do three hours of cardio at the cool gym, or do I have to go home to my girlfriend and sit in 97 degree heat, you know, <laughs> with a fan blowing on me with a wet t-shirt? To me, it, doesn't, it sounds like the cardio sounds way more appealing to me. 
Yeah, cardio for the win, man. I, I, was, I was gladly doing cardio, okay? So, now, but yeah, you, it was still tough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, you, yeah. Had, you had a real tough battle in that super heavyweight class, huh? Yeah, I did. Um, I remember coming back from the prejudging, and um, it was six of us. And uh, Ron, he was in the center square. But, you know, I didn't really let that deter me because it was six of us. So I kind of figured... You know, maybe they just lined us up that way um, since it was six guys and there's really no center, you know. So, you know, I, I didn't leave prejudging discouraged or anything. I knew it was close. Yeah. But I didn't leave prejudging defeated or thinking I had lost, you know, the uh, supers or whatever. So me and Phil, we just kept gunning to come in even tighter um, right. Saturday for the night show. And that's what we did. And it paid off, you know, so. Yeah, I think it was. I think I believe it was a three-point decision because I just interviewed Ron yesterday, and um, mm -hmm. you know he was thrilled to be second, but it was close. It could have gone either way, and so getting past him was was probably the toughest battle he had all night. Now, when you got to the overall, did you think you had a good shot at winning that? Oh uh, yeah, I, I yeah I did. I felt pretty confident going to the overall because even though I felt like. Um, I saw the light heavy backstage, but I know going into the show. Uh, Luke was favorited, and he was center stage the whole time during the, you know, the overall. So I figured, you know, with Luke being my teammate, I'll just, you know, battle a lot with him, pose with him in the overall, and maybe I could edge him out. But um, yeah, when they called, uh, <laughs> when they called for winners, the light heavy one. And um, but yeah, I did feel pretty confident going into the overall. You know, I'll, whenever you make it to the overall, it's always exciting especially with me i already knew i had got the pro card so right. it's it really just a, a bonus to be honest <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i don't think anyone really knew who was going to go because luke who won the heavyweight class obviously uh, a lot of people were, were you know kind of favoring and then shane in the light heavyweight who won the overall was probably the most conditioned of everyone up there and yeah. it looks like the judges went with conditioning i mean he was just grainy grainy hard so um that's what happens with these lighter weight guys. They got to make weight, so they're like, you know, they're peeled to the bone, like trying to, you know, get into that weight class. And sometimes that conditioning. I always say conditioning wins shows, man. Um, you're yeah, a big guy, though. You're six foot two, two sixty three on stage. I mean, that that's a lot of mass on your body on a really big frame you have, and you probably could, you probably can grow. What would you like to see yourself go up to eventually? What 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 weight you think would look good on you? I think for me, like. 285 would be a great stage weight for me. I think about 15 more pounds, 15, yeah. 20 pounds. Because like you said, I'm a taller guy. I still have some gaps to fill um, with my physique. So I think for me to match like that fuller look that some shorter guys have, I would have to add about 15 to 20 more pounds of stage weight. Yeah. Um, right now, that's what we're gearing up to do with me and Phil. Um, goal is to do the California Pro uh, next year in May. That's, so, that's the goal? Is that what you guys are planning? Yes. Okay. So um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's that's why I feel like I can, I can be competitive on the pro stage right. around that weight. Yeah, I think so. I told Phil Viz, you know, who, by the way, is your coach. You know, I told him, I said, I, congratulations, because he got you and he had Luke. So that was, you know, two winners there at the USA. That was great for him. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's you got to have someone who keeps you, you focused. And obviously, you know, you, I don't think you had a coach, did you, for the juniors? I did not. No. I didn't have a coach until uh, the Amateur Olympia. Now, I yeah, that's an interesting – I'm glad you brought that up. Last year, I thought I was going to see you at Nationals, but you actually decided to do the, the, um, the Amateur Olympia at the uh, Mr. Olympia weekend last year. Uh, and you won the Supers there, but you didn't get the overall, so you didn't get the pro card. But um, what was the reasoning behind picking that show? Yes, um, decided to do amateur. Oh, it was mainly um, Phil brought it up. I didn't really know anything about the am, uh, amateur Olympia because they just decided to hold it in Vegas that year. Right. So I didn't know anything about it. I knew a few guys that were doing it. Seth Shaw, who I competed against at Junior USA, he was supposed to do the show, but he ended up doing North Americans, winning the overall there, yeah. getting his pro card. Um, but yeah, it was mainly Phil's suggestion, and you know, I thought it was a good idea. You know, I was, you know, it was first amateur Olympia of the year in the states. Yeah, and you know, I thought it would bring some good exposure. So um, I knew it was going to be a tough show, being the fact that the pro card was going to be given to the overall winner. But you know, I took up the challenge, and you know, things didn't pan out. But 
you know, it's, it was still still a good showing. Yeah. You know, I don't regret it. So. No, you look good. That, I mean, you won the class, obviously. But uh, how come you didn't go on and do the Nationals after that? Uh, it was uh, financial. You oh, because you were moved. That's when you moved, too, right? Yeah, exactly. And also, yeah, I had decided to move. So it was a whole combination of right. things, you know, moving, financial, wanted to focus on getting out here, which, like I said, was very stressful. Um, Where did you move from? I moved from Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, which is maybe an hour south of Atlanta. Yeah. Now, what made you decide to move out to uh, California? I moved out here because uh, I met my girlfriend in Georgia. She works in news. Um, her name is Leah Uko. Uh, but she ended up landing a reporter job out here in L.A., which is where she's from. Uh, so I decided to come with her. You know, it's California, it's L.A., good exposure for bodybuilding. So I moved out here with her uh, a week after. <laughs> <laughs> was one or two weeks after the amateur Olympia. Wow. So, it was, so yeah, it's kind of like a split decision I made. Because at first I was going to stay in Georgia for a little while, then come out here. Um, but, you know, I was like, why wait? You know, so I just did it. California is expensive, too, isn't it? It is. It is. So Way more than Georgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the rent is like almost triple the price in Georgia. So <laughs> That's crazy, it's, yeah. But I yeah, guess you got a good job, so you can't turn that down, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can just... I mean, we're well, luckily enough with our setup. Uh, since Leah's from LA, we moved in with her parents, so we're saving money. Right ah, now. all right, that's always good. That's smart, very smart. Exactly. So yeah. That, what gym I, do you train at out there? Uh, the gym I train at is it's uh I go to Gold's Gym Venice a lot, mm -hmm. Gold's Gym in North Hollywood, and uh, the old powerhouse gym that's out here in the valley, which it's called a Crunch Fitness now. Right. But it used to be powerhouse, but they still have all the old powerhouse equipment. Sure. And everything. Now, people don't realize they think, oh, you're in LA, you can go to Venice Gold anytime you want. Yeah, it, it, as long as you could line it up with when the traffic is, is not, which yeah. is almost impossible, right? Exactly. The 405 is terrible. So you can't go during rush hour traffic. No, no. And everybody knows rush hour traffic in LA lasts for like maybe five or six hours. So that's <laughs> another reason. Yeah. <laughs> that was another reason why I went to Gold's late because I can get there in 30 minutes. Of course. It, if you went during prime time, though, you would you would take you four hours to get there, you know? Yeah, exactly. It'll easily take like two hours to get there. So I will always wait till maybe like seven thirty, eight 8 o'clock, get smart. there in 30 minutes, train, come right back, and I was good to go, you know? Very so, smart. Have you been have you trained yourself at Gold? Did, have you used, worked out with any of the guys there or any of the trainers there? Not at all. I've been training by myself. There. There's guys like I'll see Sergio Flex, right. uh, Sean Roden, which uh, those guys seen me late in there at night training solo. And uh, it was funny because when I got the award for Super Heavies, Sean Roden presented me the award. And I've seen him several times in there late at night doing yeah. two of days for the Arnold and the Olympia. And he was like, hey, man, I told you it'll pay off all the late nights. You know, you working hard, That's tired. Right. So <laughs> it was very cool for him to present me the award and just him seeing like what I've done with all the late sessions to get there. Right. It's, it was very... Uh, it's, yeah, words can't, I can't describe it. It was very cool, very cool. Well, Henry, congratulations on the huge win. Uh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. I, I've seen you kind of evolve in this industry, and now you're a pro, and uh, looking forward to seeing what kind of damage you can do on that pro level. I think your potential, as I said last time two years ago, is still unlimited. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dave. I'm, I'm very, I'm looking forward to just making my mark in the sport now, progressing, and just making improvements where I need to make them, and, you know, just doing damage. So we'll see. We'll see next year. You will. I think you're going to be a very dangerous guy on the IFBB Pro level in the future. How old are you now, by the way? I'm 27. Oh, you're still young, man. All right, cool. you got your whole career ahead of you still. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because, like I was telling you earlier, um, when I first started competing in PC at the age of 24, I wrote down in this composition book that I've written all my goals and everything down in that it, I'll give myself three years to get the pro card. Like I was 24 at the time. I'm 27 now. So it just goes to show, man, you know, with just hard work and just staying consistent, yeah. it can it can be done, you know. So what, what does it say in your little goal book about winning the Olympia? How many years you give yourself for that? Oh, man, I say I give myself till the age of 30, three more years. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Three more years. Another three year plan. That's yeah. great. Yes, sir. Let's see if Henry's three year plan pans out. Uh, for now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo. We're out of time. Until next week, until next time, uh, 
check it out. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.